every time that there's a new movie that comes out, everyone says it's their favorite movie. We're like three-year-olds in a candy shop. That's my favorite candy now. Nope, that's my favorite candy. I mean, I don't blame us. But I think as artists, it's very important that we learn to define what's our favorite movies and why. So here are my top favorite movies and why they're my top five favorite movies. Beep, beep, bop. So before we get into it, I want to make sure I'm focused. So before we get into it, I want to make sure that I define exactly what defines a favorite movie for me. It's not just one that I particularly like, but it's one that I would watch all the time. Plus, I think it's a good movie or has had a major impact on me in some emotional, spiritual, or creative way. So I'm going to start with one honorable mention that isn't technically in my top five, but it's really really darn close so and that is going to be independence day the director's cut that's definitely going to be in my top 10 i haven't gotten a spot for it it's one of the films that i have personally have watched 10 15 times it's one of the movies that i never mind just go re-watching again because it's just a good story it's like the best alien movie you can you can imagine, Ryan, don't don't shake your head at me. I know you like Alien, Ridley Scott's Alien, okay? I just like this one better. Newcomb. The Snoop the Bastards. Not to mention the soundtrack is absolutely amazing. So with the honorable mention out of the way, I'm going to start with number five and go all the way to my personal favorite movie. Pause the movie right now and comment below what you think your favorite, my favorite movie, my favorite movie is. And if you have a top five that you already have picked out, hit the thumbs up. So, sitting at number five, my number five spot goes to Book of Eli. Book of Eli is not only like this awesome experimental post-apocalyptic movie, it's also got like this really strong faith-based message Though, like, you know, obviously the most, I mean, they, they wouldn't play it on VidAngel or PureFlix, but it's got, like, this strong message. And I grew up watching Christian movies all the time. And a lot of my films actually have kind of faith-based themes in them. But it's awesome to see somebody take a faith-based theme and actually make a good movie out of it. And plus, it's a good story. It's a perfect arc of the hero's journey. I love the cinematography in it, and the music is bizarre and weird enough to actually make it good. So that's why this one sits at my number five spot. Again, I've probably seen this seven times. And my number four spot is, I actually don't have the DVD. I lent it out to somebody, but that is going to be Rounders with Matt Damon and Edward Norton. What? For those of you who don't know, I actually like playing poker. Um, I don't play any big casinos. I play just casually with friends. But it's something I really enjoy. I love the strategy and I love the story in this. It's really unique because it's one of those stories that it's like we always expect to see, oh, he's addicted to gambling and he overcomes it. But this wasn't it. They were trying to show that, no, this is a career that you can get good at Texas Hold'em. And just the narration, the acting with Malkovich and everything about the film, I just loved. I thought it was a very well told story about him learning to get rid of this toxic relationship. Uh, no spoilers, but it, it, I, I don't know. I Again, it's one of those movies that I just I always watch, and I'm like, this has got to go like in my top spot. So that's number four, Rounders. And number three in the number three spot is The Newsies. Now that might come as a surprise, but if some of you know me, you know I love musicals and I love music. And Alan Mankin's score on this was so amazing. And this is a story about you know, was basically kids. Even though they were portrayed by teenagers, this revolution that actually happened wasn't like a revolution, but it, th this protest that happened was by kids. Sometimes as young as three years old selling newspapers all the way up to like, tw I think it was like eight, nine, ten, something like that. And then they would have to actually go work in the factory. So the Newsies were young, young kids, and they actually set up a protest. Whether it was run by a guy named Jack Kelly, I don't know. But this is just a musical interpretation of that event happening, which was a critical turning point to the child labor laws and the eight-hour eight hour work days and things like that that were implemented. So I think it's a fantastic telling of the story in a very fun Broadway feeling. And the music that Alan Mankin wrote is just 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 phenomenal and so 
being another film that I just always never mind watching, I had to put this at my top three. Coming in at number two, which another Disney movie. Some of you may not even recognize or know that this movie existed. Tall Tale. Yeah, you're expecting some weird German movie like, Oh, nobody knows about this film, but I do. It's amazing. And I'm the only smart one that knows. So, ha. Huh. No. Just a common Disney movie. The, the story that is told in this is about a young boy who basically realizes what honor, respect, and and virtue is and he learns it through these tall tales that his dad tells him so he has this dream in which he sees these characters paul bunyan john henry and pecos bill that all represent a different version of honor strength and respect and as he learns this just the beautiful analogy that's told encaptures a perfect uh hero's journey about him learning to respect and honor the land and to, to fight for the defenseless. I mean, he, they even do the, the Code of the West thing, which perfect, perfectly encapsulates the story of, uh, of his journey. And the music complements it so well. There's a YouTube channel called Sideways that I've been trying to get him to do a review on this because I think it's one of the better scores probably ever. And honestly, if I do one on like best scores ever, this is gonna be easily in the top three. Because every time he's learning about truth, strength, or respect, or anything. There's the Pecos Bill theme. There's the John Henry theme, which represents strength. There's the uh, uh, the Paul Bunyan theme, which represents respect. You know, respect the land. It's it's just amazing. It's such a masterpiece. It's so interconnected with all these themes that it's just breathtaking. And the music is just so darn good. So this just it had to come into my second. You know, I mean, I grew up watching it. And then it wasn't, and then I'd gone like a decade without watching it. And when I watched it again, I was just like, my goodness, this is an amazing film. So that's my number two, Tall Tale. And my first favorite film is a film called Inschknufkopf. It's a German film. That's, Bro, that's probably that going to be offensive. I'm not, so the joke was that these guys that are always like, oh, I don't like any American films. Only, only foreign people actually have the good films. I do that with music, though. And coming in at my number one is because I, I'm not saying that this movie is the best movie in the world. I'm just saying that this movie was the most influential to me as a filmmaker. Drum roll, please. Yeah, you're actually playing one. Thank you. Is going to be The Village. I know for a lot of people, The Village was a bummer. They wanted the monsters to be real. But I thought that's why it made it so great. Because it was a very different style of thriller, it was great. This is not a thriller, it's a romance. But when I first watched this movie when it came out, I was so blown away at the idea that there's a different way that you can tell a thriller or a horror story. And that completely changed my mind and began to shape me as a filmmaker to rethink about how I want to do this and how I want to make movies. So I began to mimic his techniques and analyze his techniques. I started getting all the other M. Night Shyamalan movies and watching them, analyzing, finding his flaws, finding his good things he's great about and mimicking it because I admire him so much as a filmmaker. And he influenced me so much as a filmmaker. And again, it's one of those movies I've seen like a trillion times. So that's... That's it right there. That's my number one favorite movie of all time. If you guys have a top favorite and you have actually collected it in your mind, I want you to let me know in the comments below and uh, then we'll talk about it. And if you think that I'm way off base of these being good movies, also let me know in the comments below. Because I think it's incredibly important that we learn to define art for ourselves. So. It, when it comes to understanding genres, I want to link to a video right here specifically about genres, and I'm going to link to another video right here or a playlist so you can watch and actually learn to make movies. In the meantime, I want you to always be creating.